Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. In this tutorial, we'll be going over how to set up your Black Ops 3 mod tools and how to create a basic level that's playable. So the first thing I want to go over is how to actually get the Black Ops 3 mod tools. Once you own a copy of Black Ops 3 on Steam, all you have to do is go to your library, make sure you have tools selected, and right under Black Ops 3 you'll find Black Ops 3 mod tools. After installing the mod tools, you can right click, go to properties, DLC, and make sure to install the BO3 mod tools additional assets for an additional 97 gigs. Those additional assets will have tons and tons of new textures and models from the base BO3 game that you could use in all of your maps. If you're looking for more assets, you could head over to devraw.net and here we have hundreds and hundreds of assets made by the community and released for you to easily put into your mod tools that you can use in any map. Every single asset here has an instruction so it's easily followable and more tutorials will be coming out for specific assets on this website in the future. So now that we have mod tools installed and we opened up our launcher, I want to go over a few things. First off, let's go to edit, let's go to options, and make sure you use the Treyarch theme right here. Dark mode is better than light mode. Next, these buttons up here all have something to do. This first one is the new. This is how you can create new maps and mods. This button right here is to build. This one is to publish your map to the workshop. This is opening the Asset Property Editor, otherwise known as Ape. This next one is Radiant, which is the level editor we'll be using. And this last one is the Export to Bin GUI, but we are not going to worry about that. So let's go ahead and create a new map. We're going to click on New, Change Template to ZM Mod Level, and we're going to give it a name. When we named it, we're going to click OK, and it'll create these files. Let's go ahead and press OK. Now to open up Radiant, all we have to do is select our map. We can either right click open in Radiant or we can open up the Radiant here. In the next tutorial, I'll be going over how to install Virko's Radiant fixes to make yours look like mine. The first thing we're going to want to do is make sure we have our exposure tab. In our 3D camera at the top, we're just going to right click and make sure you take exposure. That will bring up the lightning bolt. If you click it, it will build lighting. Let's go over a few keybinds. F6 is fake lighting, F7 is fake lighting with shadows, F8 is real lighting, and F9 is game view. If you click M on your keyboard, you'll bring up the model browser, N for entity info, B for entity browser, S for surface inspector, T for textures, and P for preferences. Let's fix our camera so we can move around. First off, let's go into our preferences, click on camera, and we want to change our field of view, the non-game view, to 100. Let's change max FPS to your monitor's refresh rate. Mine is 60, so thus FPS max is 60. Once done, we can press apply, then OK. Next, let's go to view, go down to camera. We'll go down to camera movement mode, and make sure you select camera movement mode 2. Last but not least, let's go to FX and make sure you tick FX rendering enabled. This is for future use of any effects you place in the level. Next, let's go over the camera controls. If you hold down right mouse button and move it around, you will move around in the 3D view. If you hold down control and right mouse button and move around, you will go up and down on the Z axis. Next, if you hit Control, Shift, and hold down right mouse button, you could look around in 360 degrees. Get used to these controls, having your fingers on Control, Shift, and right mouse button to move around effortlessly. After a while, it'll just become basic muscle memory. Next, let's go over how to create a brush. This is the basic fundamentals of how to create a map in Radiant. On your keyboard, you will see from tilde to nine, if you click each of those, those will change the grid size in Radiant. Alternatively, if you go to your grid, you could also change it here. So to create a brush is very easy. Hold down left mouse button anywhere in the grid without anything selected, and you drag out, and that is how you create a brush. Now that we have a brush created, you'll see that it has no texture, it'll be the default texture. We've opened up our texture browser before by pressing T. We can go ahead and double click on any of these materials. 
for here it's going to say all in use we're going to go to all and then by here you could filter by anything so say we wanted a concrete texture we could type in concrete and here we go make note of what the red text says underneath the image this is the type of material type it is these are defined in ape which we'll go over in a future tutorial for now the ones i want you to pay attention to is just lit advanced full spec and decal if you want to filter by decals and non-decals you can go up here to material type you can do all decals or you can do all non-decals this drop down has way more than just those two but those are the easiest to go by next let's place a model we're going to press m on our keyboard to bring out the model browser we're going to switch it to all and here we have our entire library of assets that we could use I know that I have a lot of zombie assets from Black Ops 3, so I'm going to type in ZM underscore for zombie, and here we are. To put any model into a map, all you have to do is find the asset you want and drag it into your 3D camera. Our model is halfway through the floor because that's where its origin is. What we're going to do is drag it over in our grid, and now to change it on its X on its... And now to move it up on its Z axis, we're going to press Control Tab. This will change the view that you see in your grid. There we go. We have successfully put, created a brush, textured it, and placed in a model. And one last thing, let's go ahead and build our lighting. Remember to always control S for save, and that is it. All right, that's going to be it for this tutorial. If you found anything useful and I was able to help you today, please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell to be notified of all future videos and live streams. Thanks for watching and have a good one.